Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio program. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and the title of my message today is Why We Don't Need to Fear What's Coming. One night in the last week or so, I've been trying to, to come up with a, a, some kind of an idea for a podcast for y'all for two weeks. I missed last week. But it was night, and I was getting ready to just shower and go to bed, and I was talking to the Lord about how drastically contributions to JPH have dropped this year. They dropped really severely when COVID hit. Everybody's did. But recently, they dropped again. And I don't know if my content is lacking or what is going on, but... I was talking to the Lord about it because I get pretty freaked out when I can't pay my bills because I'm by myself. There's nobody to pick up the slack, you know. And um, he spoke something very clearly that immediately took my fear away because I had been getting into fear, honestly. I'm an older woman by myself doing this ministry, and most of my family, almost all of my family, has already gone on to heaven. I've got some nieces and nephews left. I have one sister who is terminally ill, um, and everybody else has gone on. The ministry is my sole source of support. We know extreme lack is coming as it is. I don't look forward to all the end-time stuff any more than y'all do. So I'm concerned about it too, you know. But the Lord said, the people are not your source of support. I am. And I immediately repented because, you know, I knew that. I've known that for years and years. But for anyone who does not understand that statement, let me explain. Whenever you are in a God-ordained ministry, one that He called you to do, one that He directs and leads, He always provides what you need. He does not do that by raining down dollar bills from heaven. He does it by leading or speaking to the people to give. Sometimes there are people on the other side of the earth. Then it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. That's Luke 6.38. Note that that verse says, give, and it shall be given. Well, I'm a giver, so I know that that verse is for me. I want you all to pay attention to some verses I'm going to read you. And notice that there is often something that we must do to receive what we need in the promise that I'm reading. Because this is very important. I have known numerous ministers over the years who did not give to anyone but themselves, but they expected everybody else to give to them. That is not how God says that works. He says, give and it shall be given unto you you got to read the Word if you want to find out the way things work and the correct way to do things. When you do things God's way, God responds as His, promise, as His promises indicate that He will. When the Lord reminded me He is my provider, I was like, whoops, I'm sorry, Lord. You're right, you're right, and I immediately repented. I repented for several hours after that. JPH has been where all my support came through for so long I had fallen into thinking of it as my job and support like when I used to work in the world. I had been praying all last week in this one about what to, what y'all needed to hear, what y'all needed to learn. And, you know, we live in such a unique time that I can't just teach you something that's not going to help you. Not my conscience won't square with that. I'm trying to equip you for what's coming for however much of it that we have to endure. I have several podcasts that I'm working on, but I didn't have anything that was, you know, anywhere near ready to record. So I began thinking, you know, not only lack, but there are so many things about what is coming that are enough to make us get into fear if we don't guard our hearts. We all feel the uncertainty of not knowing what, not knowing when. And I have pretty strong faith, strong enough that I believe for every ounce of my provision and have for years now since about 2010 or 2011 when the Lord told me to stop working. He actually told me he retired me in 2008, but I went back to work once after that when the rent money didn't show up. We all know, I mean, 
We all know that war is coming. We know that famine is coming. But if I am having concerns with faith as strong as mine is, I can only imagine what others who have never lived by faith are feeling. Not knowing how much misery or lack or terror we might be called upon to endure before the end finally comes and we get to go home. And this is where going through all those wildernesses that I had to endure really pays off. It really helps because I've been through that. It did build my faith up. That's why my faith is strong. Otherwise, I could never be out here living on faith. I could never have just jumped from the pay- paycheck system to this and go, okay, God, take care of me. Because you have to have faith to do this. And that I don't say that in a bragging way. I say that as to explain that it takes time to feel to build great faith. Okay, for your faith to get big, you got to work on it a little bit at a time. And I have tried and tried y'all to think of some way to help y'all build your faith. And if y'all have any ideas, feel free to email me or comment or do something. Because I thought, okay, do we need to do Skype calls? Do we need, you know, do I need to do teachings online like that, live teachings? Or what do we need to do to help y'all get ready? Because this could happen any day. I mean, every day when we get up, our whole world could be changed. Or that close. It's like at the door, and I'm not even kidding you. The more your faith gets built up, the less fear you have and the more confidence you have in God. I don't get fearful very often. I don't, especially over uh, provision and finances because God is taking care of me for so long. But when there's just nothing coming in, I start to get a little nervous because, you know, Whatever's in your bank account starts just going away and there's nothing coming in to replace it. And you're like, okay, what happens when it's all gone? You know, I'm too old to sleep in my car, y'all. I wouldn't last a week. But, so we live in a really, really unique time. You know, we, we know that there is coming a law that will outlaw what we believe. We don't know when, we don't know who's going to pass it, but we know it's coming here in America. I think it will eventually come globally because, you know, it's all going to come under the one world order eventually. Is it really any wonder that we have some anxiety about all this? You know, we know war is coming. We know famine is coming. We know intense persecution is coming. We know if we are here long enough, we will witness plagues, death, martyrdom, and likely all sorts of suffering. And we know we as Christians will likely lose all we have before it's all said and done, if we are left here long enough. The one thing that I cling to, besides the promises of God, is what the 90-year-old Norwegian woman saw. She saw Jesus coming back to get us right before World War III started, and I believe the next war that starts It's going to be the start of World War III. So that encourages me. So I thought it might be helpful to us all to talk about how the promises of God tell us we don't need to fear all these different things that are coming. I have a number of different categories, and I've got a group of scriptures under them that I'm going to just read you and we're going to talk about, okay? And I want you all to, to really think about this and also Listen to the scripture for the part that you're supposed to do, because that's really important. You know, a lot of people go, well, you know, we have this promise and that promise, but nothing's happening. Well, it could be that you're not doing your part. So you got to be sure that you do your part and you qualify, okay? Okay, the first category is provision or being afraid of poverty and lack. And the first one is what you would expect, Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I've quoted that one many times for a long time. Matthew 6, 31 and 32. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things, of all of these things. Now, neither one of those, I didn't see anything in either one of those that was something we have to do. Psalm 145, 15 and 16. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. So he gives us what we need when it's time. Thou openest thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Luke 12, 
verse 7 and verse 24. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are, are of more value than many sparrows. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? So if he cares about the birds, he cares about us. We were his masterpiece, remember? And remember, too, that he chose us for this time. I remind myself of that a lot. He handpicked us for this time. So we must be able to go through the part that he's called us to go through. And the people that are left in the tribulation should not be us, y'all. The, the people that are left in the tribulation are the people that still need refining. If we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, we should not be left behind. First Kings chapter 17, starting in verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, this is where he went to the widow in Zarephath, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. What does this tell you? Okay, this is the concept of put the things of God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things, and food and shelter are things, shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Look out for God's interest first. So what she did was she fed the man of God first, because that's what he told her to do. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She believed. This was her part. She believed, y'all. And she acted on it. According to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah, it lasted through the whole rest of the famine. Because she gave him one little cake. Because she sowed, she sowed out of her own need is what she did. She sowed to the kingdom because back then the prophets that went around, you know, they were basically the king doing the kingdom work and the priests. She sowed to the kingdom, and then God took care of her for the whole rest of the famine and her son. Psalm 37, 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That's an encouraging scripture. God won't forsake us. John 21, 6, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fishes. Sometimes the Lord tells you where or tells you how to get provision. Sometimes he'll say, Okay, I want you to go there and do this. I want you to go there and do that. And he will provide for you that way. Even if it looks like it's not going to happen. They had been fishing, I think, all day when this happened. I can't remember. But they had been fishing already and hadn't caught anything. He said, okay, cast it out there on the right side of the ship. And they pulled in more fish than they could. They couldn't, like the net was breaking. That's a lot of fish. And again, they did what they were told to do. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. He wants to bless you so you can be a blessing to others. It's always God's will to bless us so we can bless other people. Okay, let's talk about protection, because a lot of people worry about that and what's coming, and no wonder. Psalm 62, 6, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. God is our defense. Nahum 1.7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. He's our defense, and he's a stronghold. We have to remind ourselves of these things. Psalm 4, 8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Only God can keep you safe wherever you are. You can be in the best neighborhood in America or the worst one, but God can keep you safe either place. Persecution. We've talked about this many times. It's not a fun thing to look forward to, not a fun thing to go through. 
A lot of people go through it even now. 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Why is that? Because if we live godly lives, it sets us apart, and we're not like all the people of the world. People tend to attack whatever is different because they don't understand it. John 15, 18, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Remember, the world hated Jesus first. 1 Peter 3, 14, but, but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Matthew 5, 10, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Galatians chapter 13, starting in verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And we know who that is. It's talking about the Antichrist. So he will be given power over all the world and over all the saints. For whoever is still here, I don't know if we'll be here. Hopefully not. He will make war with us because we'll refuse to worship him. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which killed the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Okay, let's talk about fear. Y'all can make lists of these scriptures and use them for your confession list if, you, if they register with your spirit. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, that tells us that fear is not from him, and we need to kick it back out the door. Joshua 1, 9, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Psalm 23, 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 91, 14 through 16, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Okay, did you catch that? Because he has set his love, because we love him, therefore he delivers us. He will set us on high because we know who he is. We know his name, meaning we know the name of the one true God. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Okay, and that it says we need to call on him and then he will answer us and he will be with us in any trouble and he will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And that is exactly what God is up to in this, these end times. He is going to get the attention of unbelievers. And the labor pains will come harder and closer together until he has it. It will not be pretty to watch y'all. John fourteen twenty seven. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Talk about weakness. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you, will, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And the difference that he got me with that scripture, y'all, long ago, the first year I was in the walk, I was play, I didn't feel like reading the Bible, and I would just flip it open and do Bible bingo, and I'd read two paragraphs and go to sleep. And he got me with that one. He's like, when you search for me with all your heart, we'll talk. And I was like, oh, sorry. Isaiah 40, 29, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Let's talk about anxiety. Anxiety is a huge, huge problem in the world right now, and it's no wonder. Isaiah 41, 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 26, 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. I have one of the Bibles that my mother owned during her lifetime. and It was the one she owned in the 80s when she was married to my stepfather. And the other day I was looking for scriptures in it, and I came across this scripture. And she had underlined it. And I was highlighting the same one, and she had underlined it. And it just, for just a minute, it felt like she was with me studying the Bible. It was the coolest thing ever, y'all. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful for nothing. Some of the translations read, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts in mind through Christ Jesus. Okay, did you catch the part we're supposed to do? We're not supposed to worry. I know that's easier said than done, but just try. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So we need to pray, and we need to be thankful. I'm still working on the meaning of supplication. I think it means to make your request. He says, let your request be made known to God. So we're supposed to pray, be thankful, and let God know what we're asking for. And God likes for you to be specific. Can I just tell you that? And then he will give us peace and he will keep our hearts and our minds. Isaiah 26, 3, again, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted thee. Let's talk about war. Matthew 24, verses 6 through 13, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he told us, we're going to hear it. Just don't get upset, because these are things that have to happen. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. We're into the sorrows already. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved." Job 5.20, in famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. There is your verse right there that you can quote for both of those things. In famine, Lord, your word says you will redeem me from death, and in war from the power of the sword. There you go. Psalm 91, 5 through 8, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at doom day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So you're going to see it, but not be in it. That's what he is telling you. You're going to be safe. One of the things that will help build your faith, and that helped build mine, by the way, is to read... Uh, stories about Psalm 91 protecting people. And I know I have at least one book in the bookstore out on the JPH site at justpraisehim.today in the bookstore tabs. 
about those that have those some of those stories in them. But those are very encouraging, true stories, y'all. And they'll really help you to understand that Psalm 91 is the ultimate protection from like everything. <clears throat> that is what our, our mamas and grandmothers prayed over people that were in the wars to keep them alive. If you will get things like that now and read them and get them down in your spirit, then when the really horrible things happen, it will, ra- it will come up in your spirit and you'll be reminded and it will help you stay calm and have faith for whatever you're facing. Salmon. Y'all know I like to eat because I talk about food all the time, right? I don't like the idea of famine. Matthew 24, 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Psalm 37, 19, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Sorry about my voice breaking, y'all. It's late. Job 5.20, in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Luke 21.11, in great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, before I read the next few verses, just the other day, God gave us a word about planetary happenings and things happening in the atmosphere. I think that's going to be a pretty interesting thing to see, but probably terrifying at the same time. I'm pretty curious about what's going to come out of that because I have no idea. I don't know anything about astronomy. Amos 8.11, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. That's more terrifying than not having food. There's more than one kind of famine. Amos 4, 6 through 9, And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities in a want of bread. Want of bread is famine. In all your places, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. That's verse 6. That tells you right there why he sends famine. Yet have you not returned unto me. So God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Back then, he used famine to get men's attention because they had gone away from him, and he will do it today, too. I'm just saying. And also, I have withholden the rain from you, so drought for the same reason. When there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered into one city to drink water but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting. I don't know what blasting is. If anybody knows, please tell me. And mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I couldn't look it up on my phone. I didn't have access to the internet to look that up today. Ezekiel 14, 13, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof, that's famine, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Jeremiah 14, 12, when they fast, I will not hear their cry, and when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by famine, and by the pestilence. That's war, famine, and plagues. Jeremiah 34, 17. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ye have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother, and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. It's not good. Jeremiah 42, 16 and 17. Then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine, whereof you were afraid, shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. 
They shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. That's judgment, y'all. In Jeremiah 42, that's judgment. Jeremiah 44, 13, For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. I just wanted you to see in those two verses, this is a pattern with God. These are the ways that he judges. When judgment comes, famine and war and plagues come with it. When we see those, those are being sent for those who are doing wickedness, who are refusing to believe in him, and who are just living horrible lives. Let's talk about loss and grief, because that comes with war and all this stuff. Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never, never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Revelation 21, 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I cannot wait for that, y'all. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God, or comforted of God. Psalm 147.3, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Psalm 73.26, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Matthew 5.4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We're just going to talk about one more thing, and that's weariness, and then I'm going to close. Weariness, Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, and 28 through 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Isaiah 61, 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. He gives us beauty for ashes because he gets glory when he does. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Jeremiah 31, 25, for I have satiated the weary soul and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. The best way to come out of fear is to find the promises relating to your situation and then speak them out, speak them out, speak them out. When Satan comes at you whispering his prophecies of doom, you speak them out again and say, not today, Satan. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You can record them on your phone and then listen to them wherever you, whenever you're in, if you're stuck in traffic, if you're doing housework, if you're outside working on the car, whatever you're doing, just play those over on your voice recorder. You can save this podcast to remind you any time that you hear bad news and you need to be shored up. If he gave us these promises to reassure us, to show us who he is and let us know he will be there for whatever we need. But if you neglect to know them, they won't be any help to you when that time comes. I know about being busy. Y'all know I do. You're busy and you don't feel like you have time to study. You're studying now, listening to the sermon. When I started studying the Bible, the Bible is not automatically open to you when you get saved. If anybody that's newly saved is listening to me, this is something no one ever told me. 
the word is not open to you when you first get saved. I, I had been saved for a little while when a lady in church told me that. I think I was in the walk about a year and God saw that I was serious about the walk and I was not going back to sin. I was serious and I was committed to him. And he opened the word to me. And when he opened it, it all of a sudden made sense. Does, does every verse make sense? No, I still have to study out stuff. But the, overall, the Bible makes sense to me and I can read it and I can understand it. And you can too. If it's not unlocked to you, ask him to unlock it to you. But once it, there is so much power in there, he can't just leave it open. He, it's like leaving a door unlocked to a big mansion. You can't just do that. But he will unlock it to you. It's really interesting. When he does, you will just devour it. But until he does, you can learn the word other ways than just by reading the Bible. You can listen. You can listen to... Um, my favorite CDs to listen to about the Bible are the ones where they sound where it sounds like a movie. I forgot now the name of it, but y'all know which one I'm talking about. They made them years ago. They have all these different actors doing the voices. And that one, it sounds like you're listening to the Bible being played out in a movie. He gave us his promises to reassure us, to show us the way, to help us understand things that are going on, to help us to change our life for the better, to renew our mind. But if you ignore the word and you never make any time for the word or you don't try to work it into your schedule somewhere, you're not going to know any word. And then when the bad stuff hits, you got nothing to help you, y'all. No matter how busy you are, you can work that in because you just listen to it while you're doing other things. I did that for years. I used to listen to it driving to work into Dallas, driving back out of Dallas, driving all through Oklahoma and wherever I was working when I was in the oil field. I drove all over western Oklahoma listening to the Bible and all over Oklahoma City. You know, you're concentrating on driving, but your subconscious is picking up a lot more of that than you think it is. And you listen to sermons. It is a lot more productive than listening to, you know, rock and roll or whatever your music choice is. Though I am a fan of doing worship music in the car. Studying any time that you're listening to the word. And when you're speaking out the promises, you're bringing God's promises, the power of his word, into your situation. And that's what we all need to do every day. When you speak them out often enough, they get written on your heart because they also go back in your own ears. And then when you face a situation of fear or lack, they remind you not to fear. Don't worry. Whatever comes, he's got you. Jesus bless you. Thanks for listening. Y'all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. I hope this has inspired you to a closer walk with Christ. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., P.O. Box 854, Altus, Oklahoma. That's A-L-T-U-S, Oklahoma 73522. Or by email at wingsofprophecy at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination.